Even though we'll have some days that the market's gonna take down, you're gonna say, I can't believe I just bought the top again. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of every single video that I've recorded in the last couple of weeks. Don't look at stocks at the top, right? Here's a perfect example. This is gravity. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. So, you know, let's talk about it. You know, summer is slowly but surely uh, going in the end of the down stretch motion until we hit Labor Day and all of a sudden kids are back in school. And next thing we know, we have winter here in the Northeast, which sucks. So let's enjoy what we have now. And after I'm done with this, I'm going to enjoy summer, right? Which is the most important part. Uh, again, the old myth, and you hear people talking about, oh, the summertime is slow, the market is slow, who, nobody trades in the summertime. I, I guess it all depends what you trade, right? I, I guess it all depends what you're looking at in the markets. You know, sometimes uh, the market is good for one group, and maybe it's not good for the other group, but the one group that continues to be uh, very much alive, whether it's spring, summer, fall, or Sundays and Tuesdays, right? Or Wednesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays is still technology, is still high beta, and still the stocks that have the biggest uh, average ranges. Again, we'll get to that uh, in a second. Uh, another uh, pretty much winning week for the market. You had uh, the Dow flat. You had the Dow flat. I didn't realize that. You had the Dow flat, the S&P up four tenths of a percent, and the NASDAQ, despite giving a little bit of profit taking today, uh, up 2.2% for the for the week. And more important is, again, we continue to build uh, off this 296.75 level that we've in nausea covered for uh, weeks and weeks and weeks before we broke out above that level because that was the 50-day moving average. And again, a healthy market, uh, or an organic market, what it looks like, it kind of looks like this. You have three, four days uh, up and you have one day that's flat or one day that's down. That's what an organic market looks like. We, we you know, we, we were going up and, and ironically, we went up eight days in a row on the NASDAQ. So it was healthy that we, we saw some red. It, it's a very good thing. But what we talk about all the time is the indexes don't mimic the action. Okay. And even though uh, you saw the indexes red at some point today, or uh, on all three of them at one point before the Dow kind of rallied and the NASDAQ only finished uh, down 65 points, you saw there was a pretty good moves uh, in a lot of names to the upside and again the biggest theme uh the biggest theme is the eyeball test and so we say this all the time you know your eyeballs don't lie okay and you know two weeks ago when all this started and we started seeing stocks missing okay we saw uh microsoft miss we saw google miss okay we saw uh meta miss we saw netflix you know miss basically and you know amd missed the other day and next thing you know square last night and uh, amc were all lower and guess what happens right the new formula on wall street is forget about good earnings you got to have bad earnings you got to cut workforce you got to say really dark things for the exception of the word bankruptcy on your conference call and you will rally and that's exactly what happened when you when you when if you're not still sure which way the wind is blowing again look at square look what square did today okay uh, look what Square did today. Square got destroyed last night. They bought that dip faster than you can blink. It was up at one point two dollars before it kind of sold off. Look at AMC, right? It's a movie theater, right? This is not Microsoft or AMD or you know something or blah blah blah, right? This is a movie theater. They sold the stock off last night and then they rally. Not only they rally, they rally this th this thing up in three and a half dollars, which is giving it some daylight. Again, maybe not it's going to a thousand, but hey, you know you could get it. A second day wave so the market continues to discount bad news that's a good thing uh, again you can go on three thousand different financial sites thirty thousand different financial sites and they're breaking down the jobs number and here's a quote on friday u.s stocks open predictably lower predictably low right because if that was predictably low you should have sent everything in on the overnight and the short side again predictably low okay uh, rates jumped to wake of July unemployment, uh, wages rose fast as, okay, I have no idea what any of that means. I just want to say it out loud. I also want to say one thing before we get started. Yo, bro, smash the like button. Okay, I got it out of my system. Other than that, you know, other than that, again, the eyeball test is everything, okay? It, it's absolutely everything. If stocks are not going down on bad news, if stocks are not going down on bad earnings, right? 
Well, again, that's the bull market. That's the whole point. And that correlates very, very well with what we've seen here in the last couple of weeks. Again, like we said, of course, you can have down days. Of course, you can have two, three down days, sometimes retesting key levels. Like, for example, would it shock me that the Qs, because the Qs held the five-day moving average rather nicely today. But would it really shock me if the Qs lost 18 next week and went to 12, right? The rising 10-day support? Not at all. But again, that's healthy action. Stocks need to recharge. Stocks need to regroup. We, you can't just go straight up. Again, here's a perfect example of a stock that went straight up and gravity took care of it, right? We talked about last night. Uh, we talked. We started talking about last night. Last night, you had Tesla. Uh, there was a vote, right? There was a vote if they were going to split the stock three to one. Uh, most people believed that this deal was kind of a done deal. So the question was, how is the stock going to react? And in front of the uh, in front of the split last night, you had uh, you had a bunch of 950, 975, a thousand weekly call buyers. Again, this is a slam dunk, done deal. And then you had guys coming in for the 920 and the 900 puts. So again, it was a toss up. Nobody knew, right? Maybe even if you had the information in front of you and said, look, the stock is going to split three for one. We know this. They're signing off. You still can't predict price action. And the one telltale sign, this is where we talk about using your eyeballs as the judge, jury, and sometimes executioner. Well, it's, it's what didn't happen. That was the most important part. And this morning, we talked about this, right? I go, look, Tesla last night, three for one confirmed last night, and the stock didn't react. That was your first telltale sign. If, if, if Tesla last night would have started building, you know, 950, not, you knew this damn thing was going to rocket, but it didn't. As soon as the, they came out with the news that the board approved the three for one split, the stock did absolutely nothing, actually started down ticking. So this morning when we woke up, it was down five, six bucks. It was actually on previous days, low of 918. And I started thinking to myself, oh, wait a minute, how, you know, how can this thing be a slam dunk? How can this be, uh, uh, how can this be a hundred percent? bias one way direction if all retail is looking at one way and i started thinking about it, i said well wait a minute there's some key levels coming up and if the stock can't rally on the news that was quote unquote supposed to rally well two things indicate number one the stock is tired look stock is up almost 200 points in two weeks right can we all agree on that it's tired okay and the most important part was it held 906 and here's the whole, here's the whole point how i was thinking about it three for one confirmed last night stock didn't react it hit and bounced off the five-day pre-market at 906, right? That's the five-day moving average. It's up nearly 200 points in a week. If it can start losing that 903 level, it can see 880, right? It's all about nothing, nothing about Tesla's going back to 600, the stock is going to zero, blah, blah, blah. Again, trades channels, it's all we need. We don't care about data, we don't care about this, we don't care about that, we don't care about what the news is, it's how the channels react to the news. And Tesla was a perfect example of, again, too much, too fast, right? Too much, too fast. Here's the levels we talked about. This 906 level was the five day, the 903 was the level here, and it went all the way down to 980. And not only did it lose the 980, it went all the way down to 960. Again, does it mean the stock is broken? Does it mean the stock is now in a death spiral going back to uh, you know, going back to $646? No, it doesn't mean that. Maybe it, maybe it takes one or two more days to kind of digest, maybe get down to back to this level here, but the bull market is still intact. Again, don't confuse don't confuse weakness with stocks going lower, right? Stocks are going to move up and down all the time, but you got to look at the big picture. And until we bull, until the bulls uh, defend the 50-day moving average, we continue to be in a bull bias. Even though we'll have some days that the market's going to take down, you're going to say, I can't believe I just bought the top again. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of every single video that I've recorded in the last couple of weeks. Don't look at stocks at the top, right? Here's a perfect example. This is gravity. Do not look at the stocks. They don't need any reason to come down and get profit taking. But if they have one, if there is a catalyst that gets debunked, right, by retail and they all jump in at the same time at the same price, it's going higher right? That's when usually you get the rug pull and any stock that's in the nosebleed session, those are the ones with the high probability to get yanked. And that's exactly uh, what happened with Tesla. Yeah, maybe, you know, if it confirms on Monday, if it confirms the 10-day moving averages, there's maybe another trade lower. I think there is. Uh, I think there is, depending on what the market does. But at least you're getting a viable definitive area where to trade against. And if that level doesn't confirm, well, then maybe Tesla has a dead cat bounce back up. But if it does confirm, then you have a lot bigger level uh, going on the way down. So what we do know going into this ne next week is the Qs, right? The Qs, the low today was uh, 318.39, why is that important? Well, it's the five day moving average. You can see here, every single time it hit the five day, it bounced, bounced, right, bounced, and today bounced. So if we lose that 318.29, again, we're not going back down to the lows. We're gonna go back to measure potential, which there could be 313, 312. Yeah, it might be an ugly day if you don't know these levels exist and you, and you completely shun 
uh, shun yourself uh, into into the the idea the stocks can never go down or at least not move down. Uh, you, yeah, you're probably going to see a move down from 318 to 312, but don't worry, right? Don't worry. We're still in a massive uptrend, even if you get caught in that spin cycle. You know, whatever God you want to pray to, but the point is you want to be proactive and knowing these levels so you don't get uh, sidetracked. That's very very important. When you look at the SPY. Uh, again, same kind of scenario as uh, the Qs had a really, really big run. Again, you don't want to start a position here, right? The, the Qs, the, the spies broke out right here on the 50-day moving average. Again, the, the trade at 392 is completely different than the trade at 415, right? The higher probability, the move will come lower, right? Will come lower before it goes higher. And the question is, can you be solvent faster or well, better or more equipped? Uh, than to be and stay in business, to be right. And that's exactly what you want to do. You don't want to chase uh, the spies up here. The trade was right over here, but you can get a better level on a retest back to the 10-day moving average. If indeed takes out today's lows of 409.60s, then you can get a maybe a better entry somewhere around the 406 level, which is roughly the 10-day moving average. So look, I, I like a lot of names going into Monday. Slowly but surely, we're coming out of earnings season, especially for... Uh, especially for technology. Let me see who comes out next week. I, I don't think NVIDIA has reported yet. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. I don't think NVIDIA has reported yet. So Monday, you got uh, Plantier, Palantir, N N N Nanovax, Blink, Mara, nobody really there. Uh, Tuesday, let's see, nothing. TTD, TTD reports on Tuesday. I actually like that. Uh, Coinbase rep reports on Tuesday. Uh, really, really big runner there as well. Uh, Disney on Wednesday. It's pretty much it, right? Disney, and you got uh, Rivian on Thursday. Not that Rivian's a big deal. Uh, and then that's it. That's it for technology. I think everything else kind of reports, has reported, or maybe reports uh, next week. So it's a pretty basic. Uh, pretty basic scenario. Again, don't overthink, guys. Again, you know, I get this ass all the time. Well, Dan, don't you know, what do you think about the PPI? What do you think about the jobs number tomorrow? What can I possibly have thought about the jobs number, right? The jobs number is either going to be good or bad. Who the hell knows? I, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an economist. I don't have an opinion. I don't know anything, right? That's the whole point. That's what these lines, right? And these lines, and these channels, they're the ones that are going to tell you what to do. You know, we don't know. Even if I had the jobs number in my hand, right? When I'm thinking good jobs number, right? I would have bet long, right? Good jobs number. Things got young, right? So we don't know. We don't know. Don't try to uh, overanalyze the market. Don't try to pretend you're smart. Nobody's smart. We're all dumb. We're all idiots. The only common denominator that we have that's a fair playing field with all of us have at one time are all these charts. Again, you could look at a chart. Two people could look at a chart and say one says bullish, one says bearish. Whoever knows how to read a chart better, guess what? They're probably going to win. And the problem with newer traders is they try to overthink. They try to overanalyze and they try to anticipate. If you overanalyze, if you try to overthink and you try to impress somebody to say how smart you are about your uh, brief intelligent history about the stock market, I promise you the market will humble you in, in so many creative ways that you will not be possible. Don't think, guys. Rem remember, it's all about these charts. You don't need anybody telling you when to jump. You don't need it to ask anybody's opinion. What do you think about this stock? The same data you're getting is the same data I'm getting. The only difference is I'm doing this for 23 years and a lot of you guys are doing this for 23 months and it's okay. You're not supposed to get everything. You're not supposed to get everything all the time. Enjoy the journey, right? Enjoy the journey. You don't need to outsmart the market. You don't need to pound your chest to show everybody how smart you are. Enjoy the journey. It, there's, it's, it's an infinite, infinite... What's the word I'm looking for? It, it's an infinite grind without a goal line without you know without a ribbon you don't get a go you know you don't get a trophy at the end so everything that you're doing screen time doing the research putting in the work it's going to only make you better time is the ult ultimate equalizer time is the ultimate teacher and after a while you'll be self-sufficient i know it's hard to imagine right especially when you're first starting out and you have no money and you have no process um and you're eager to learn, and you're eager to make $500 to turn it into 50 million. I get it. I see it on social media all the time. It's wonderful, wonderful, uh, you know, it's a wonderful thought. But I'm also thinking I could dunk backwards with my left hand. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. Anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, go, some good ideas going into next week. Um, I, I like Tesla. Again, I'll watch Tesla again to the downside. Again, uh, quickly with the pivots, uh, you know, Tesla got absolutely manhandled today. 906, 903, went to 880, and then went to... 
uh, 860. First solar. Solars look good. I still like this first solar for tomorrow. Uh, 102, uh, 102 uh, 20 needs to build. Here was for solar. And again, really did, did prove uh, this is a pretty good action on both sides of the market. Here is the 102 20, uh, went to 104. If uh, first solar can reclaim uh, 104, maybe goes to 107 next week. That was good. Obviously, we talked about Tesla. Chewy is a nice looking chart. 43.50 needs to build. Here was Chewy, right? You can see there's pretty good value on both sides. So here is the 43.50. Right, 43.50 needs to build to close pretty much right at the highs at 44.50s. It looks like it has, has room here to about 46 uh, for next week. Uh, Coinbase, oh, 51.20 on TTD. Remember, if TTD reports on Tuesday. So if you are swinging TTD, just, just remember, just be careful. They are swinging 20. Coinbase came to the bottom of the range, actually made a low of 50, 86.50 today, and then rallied right back. Same thing with NVIDIA. Uh, not a not a big move at all to the downside. Only went down like 30, 40 cents before it rallied back. Again, it really does show you how strong these stocks are. Uh, Microsoft, I love, love Microsoft for next week if the market continues uh, to be good. You see how tight this channel is? Uh, so if Microsoft doesn't die in the next couple of days and starts taking out this channel here, you could start the next leg up. So Microsoft looks good. I also like NVIDIA back to the upside. Uh, TTD, here comes TTD. It's a nice, nice little move on TTD this morning as well. So here is the 5120 and it closed right at the high of the day. If this thing starts building 53, it could have the next leg up. Also, NET, what a monster today. Uh, we didn't trade NET today uh, just because they had earnings. But what is going on here? But look how tight this thing is getting for, look how tight this thing is getting for Monday's session, right? They gapped up the stock, really big move, and it just kind of went sideways for the whole day. I, I, again, you don't have to be an experienced uh, chart reader or chart analyst to, to see the top of the flag here, man. If this thing gets above the top of the flag here, this thing could go to 79.80. That's it. That's it, guys. So put in the work, right? Put in the work, have faith. Don't put in a lot of, stress on yourself that you know you're trading for two years one years three years that you have to figure everything out or else you're a failure you're not okay this is just the normal organic way that traders make their bones right the faster you can fall in love with technical analysis the faster you'll start seeing dividends because the technical analysis will love you back guys god bless have a safe wonderful healthy weekend and with god's help i will see you all on monday take care guys